I'm, I'm, I am excited about this video. I think this is something I've been leading up to for some time. Um, if you have watched the previous two sort of beginner style videos about music streaming servers and streamers, then you'll be okay with this. But if you haven't watched those videos or read the associated articles on my website, um, you might be a little bit lost. Maybe, I don't know, it depends on you know, your own understanding of streamers and servers. Um, before we get going, you should know that there is drilling going on in my building. Down in the cellar, they're installing a new sprinkler system and occasionally we're gonna get interrupted. I'm gonna try and plow through it if I can. We've also got issues with the sunlight coming in and out, so that may mess the visuals up. So anyway, we will start with this question. What should I use or what could I use if I'm not willing to spend the money on Rune? How can I stream in my house and do Tidal and Cobas and other things um, without using Rune? And one of the answers, one of the answers I'm most excited about relates to squeeze box. I used to have a squeeze box, well, no, I still have a squeeze box, it's in my rack here. But I used to use a squeeze box all the time in the, in the early noughties, the late noughties. And only in about 2012 did I cut over to a Mac and then over to Rune from there. But the Squeezebox ecosystem is still running, it's still developed as an open source project. And nowadays with modern hardware, Raspberry Pi hardware we're gonna to use today. So with Raspberry Pi hardware and the Squeezebox ecosystem, we can produce a streaming setup at home for very little money indeed. And I'm, I'm really pumped about this. I'm very excited about this because I think it's so cool. So behind me in my rack, I have a Logitech Squeezebox Touch. Now that's just there to show you how we used to do it. Because that touch also needs to see Logitech media server software running on another computer. It can run its own, but that, uh, it was designed to run its own server software years ago, but it didn't really handle large libraries very well. So ignore that, ignore the Squeezebox Touch really, it's just for illustrative purposes. I want you to focus on the, the orange brick. That's a hard drive with all my music on it. And it's connected to a Raspberry Pi with a, a low Digi1 hat on top inside a little black box. So I want you to focus on the black box. Now the black box is connected to my network, but that's only so I can control it because inside the black bo box, inside the black, blah, 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 inside the black box, running on the Raspberry Pi is an operating system called Pi Core Player. Now, when you first install and run Pi Core Player, all it does is run something called Squeeze Light. That's like a virtual squeeze box. So it turns the Pi with the hat, you don't really need the hat, but for better sound you do. It turns the Pi with the hat into a virtual squeeze box. But even that would still need to see Logitech media server to get its files, to receive files from the cloud or from wherever it is. But the really awesome thing about PyCore Player is that because it's such a small operating system and because Logitech media server is not especially resource hungry, it can also install and run Logitech media server. So on my Pi, my black box, is running Squeeze Light and Logitech Media Server. So it can stream to itself. Streams from the hard drive, which is USB attached into the back. So it's an entire server streamer in one box. So I have the Spitoff out connected to my DCS Bartok DAC. If you don't have an Alo hat, you can just do this with a normal Raspberry Pi and use USB out, but you run the risk of hearing clicks and pops because the USB audio on a Pi is shit. But yeah, so it's an all-in-one server streamer that 
just lives in the rack and you don't need anything else. You don't need a server in the kitchen or anywhere else. It's, it serves files to itself. Now, I am not technical support, so I'm not gonna give you line-by-line -line instructions on how to install and set up Pi Core Player on the Pi, because Pi Core Player have that on their website already. But I will give you the basic gist, so you know what order in which to do things and things to look out for when you're setting it up. So obviously you start by downloading the Pi Core Player OS from their website, you write it to a micro SD card, and then you insert it into the Pi, and then you boot the Pi. And then it will get an IP address from your router, so you use that IP address to access the Pi Core Player interface in a web browser using any other device that's on your home network. Now, when you're looking at those settings, initially they're gonna be like, oh my God, this is like horrendous. This is just so much scary stuff. But I promise you, you just need to chill don't feel too overwhelmed because squeeze light is running automatically. So if you just want to use your Pi as a virtual squeeze box and you've got squeeze box server, Logitech Mesa server, running elsewhere, you're good. You don't have to worry about anything else really. But if you do want to do as I've done here, you will need to install a Logitech Media Server. There's a page for that in the Pi Core player settings panel, but before you do that, before you click install LMS, because it's called LMS, before you do that, you must really install the additional file system support, specifically for XFAT, so that when you do connect a hard drive, the LMS can read it. And then after, once you've done that, then you can go and click install Logitech Media Server, and it will run a whole bunch of processes. You'll see them whiz past on a little sort of text display, and then that will be installed. You have to reboot, and then once it's booted, it's up and running. But before you can connect to LMS, you've got to attach a hard drive, and you have to tell the Linux operating system to mount that hard drive. It, it sounds complicated, it's actually not. It's just you need to just give your hard drive a name, go set mount point, and that's done. And you'll need to reboot again. So you've got squeeze line up and running, you've installed your additional file system support, you've installed LMS, you've mounted your hard drive, and now really you're pretty much good to go to get into LMS. So the Logitech Media Server will be at the IP address of your squeeze box, colon 9000. 9000 is the port by which you access LMS. And then that will come up in your web browser, so different to the Pi Core Player interface, LMS interface, and then straight away just go to the top right and click the player drop down to select your Pi Core player as your active player. That's basically telling it where Squeeze Light is. So you've got a server that can stream to itself. Once you've done all this once, that's it. It's done, it's set up, and you're good to get on with streaming with LMS and Squeeze Light in a single box on a Raspberry Pi. That's amazing. <laughs> So once LMS knows where your hard drive of music is, you can get to playing music. You can use the web interface. It's kind of plain initially. You definitely notice you're not in Rune. So there's no beautiful magazine layout. There are no hyperlinked biographies. There's no Valence AI code to suggest albums to you. There's no signal path telling you what your streamer and DAC are doing to the digital bits of audio. And then once you're up and running with music, once you've kind of gotten over your not in rune anymore, I recommend a couple of things. First of all, install what's called the material skin. So that's the skin that the, the web browser sees. Because the material is faster, it's designed for mobile devices, so you can pull up a web browser on your phone. 
any web browser will scale beautifully with this material skin and it's super fast. And then if you're on Android, I thoroughly recommend Orange Squeeze as the remote control app of choice. That's the one I use. On iOS, definitely iPeng. It's fantastic. As we'll see later, it has a very cool trick up its sleeve. Um, so those three things, Material, Orange Squeeze, iPeng. Now Kobos and Tidal, they are beautifully integrated in Rune so that they appear as part of your own library. So it's hard to see where your library ends, your hard drive library ends, and where Tidal and Kobos pick up. That's not really the case with LMS and the Squeezebox ecosystem. They definitely appear as two sort of different sections of music. But as you probably gathered already with the plugins, we're not just restricted to Tidal and Kobos with LMS. We can do Spotify, SoundCloud, Mixcloud, Deezer, Pandora, BBC Radio. There are, as you will see from the list of plugins, there are a plethora of services available to integrate into the back of your Logitech media server. So in terms of extensibility, it's more powerful than Rune. Oh, one more thing. There's no metadata overlay with LMS as there is with Rune. So whatever files you put on your hard drive, LMS will scan them and whatever metadata is in those files is what's displayed in the menu system on the remote control apps or inside the web browser. So if you've got shitty tags, you're gonna have a shitty experience. So make sure your tags are sorted. One of the key features of the Squeezebox ecosystem that many people love and I love is being able to browse your music collection via folder structure. So you don't need a database, you can just click this folder, this folder, and go in and click play. That's great. One other great feature of modern day LMS is something called Don't Stop the Music. It's a plugin. It acts a little bit like Rune Radio does in that it plays similar music related to the existing playlist once that's finished. So it just keeps the music flowing. It keeps it within a certain genre if you want to. It can work from Spotify if you want it to. It can also take its cues from the last FM database. It's not AI powered, but for me it works in a kind of similar sort of way to Rune Radio. So that's a good substitute in my book. It's not perfect. It's not as good as Rune Radio, but it's pretty damn good. I've often maintained that having a hard drive full of music at home is a bit like my own private streaming service. Now one feature I've always wanted from Rune, it's still not there yet, is being able to pull up an app on my phone and offline an album from the server, in this case my squeeze box and my hard drive, to my phone so that I can then walk out of the house, listen to it and then delete it later. Now with Orange Squeeze, I can do that. There's an option within each album to say download to device, it will download it to my phone, and off I go, a bit like offlining Spotify. So that's another great feature of the LMS ecosystem. If I forget to offline an album and I'm already out of the house, I've set this up so I can VPN into it and then Orange Squeeze thinks it's on my home network and it can offline an album if I want it to. It can also stream if I want it to, to my device, to my Android device, but for that, I need another app, which is a virtual Squeezebox player for Android. So you need two apps to stream out of the house with Android. With iOS, you only need one app. You just need iPeng. It has its own little virtual player built in. And it, it can't download to device, but one really cool feature that it does have is that you can restrict it to MP3 streaming when you're out of the house and VPN'd in. Um, so that you're not eating your bandwidth, so you're not streaming a flat, because all my stuff is stored as flat here. And with Orange Squeeze, it streams as flat. With iPeng, you can tell it in a setting to transcode that flat to MP3 before sending out of the home internet connection to my phone elsewhere. 
So again, there's more out of the house flexibility from LMS. And I absolutely love that. I think it's really useful. But I guess on a more basic level with all of this, I know it's a little bit complicated to set up, but once it's up and running, it's just a, such a small device that runs as a streamer and a server with a hard drive attached. It has a small footprint and it's low power draw. Super simple. But perhaps the most compelling feature of all of this is that the hardware is crazy cheap. A Raspberry Pi, you can get set up for like 50 euros. If you want to get a better digital signal, you add a hat or you can put a DAC on top if you wanted to. Just adding hats makes it a little bit nicer in terms of going into an audio system. Those hats are not crazy expensive. So you, you, know, you could be all up for about 150 euros and the software is free. So that's it. It's a very simple server streamer setup using the Squeezebox ecosystem that costs next to no money. Anybody could get up and running with this. But that's the point of this video is that my role, and this is how I see my role as a, a YouTube reviewer person type thing, is that I'm here to point you at stuff. But once I have pointed you at stuff, you then have to pick up the baton or baton, depending on where you live, and then you have to run with it. You have to do some work of your own, whether that's going to listen to something else, or in this case, messing around with writing OSs to the Raspberry Pi, configuring an operating system, setting up Squeezebox server and all that, and, and troubleshooting. You have to do some work in all of this for every video. So I'm never gonna give you <laughs> the complete solution that you just walk into a store and buy, you will always have to do some work. I know some of you don't want to hear this. Some of you want hard and, hard and fast answers, quick and easy answers. I'm never going to give you that. I'm just pointing you at stuff and going, I think this is really cool. Here's why I think it's really cool. I mean, can you imagine what this video would have looked like if I talked you through step by step, click this, now click this, now type this, now do this. It would have been a mess. I mean, it's already a little bit messy as it is. So please understand that this is not a step by step walkthrough. You've got to do some work, some investigation of your own. The rewards from this particular system are immense because once you've got this set up and it's connected to your hi-fi rack, you just need iPeng or Orange Squeeze and you are up and running playing music through a Raspberry Pi type system. And again, I must emphasize this for next to no money. Awesome. If you liked this video, if you thought it was really useful, please give us a like. If you like the fact that I will duck into other ways of doing things, it's not just like a product review. It's more of a tutorial kind of, but showing you different ways of achieving similar results to other systems, then please, if you like that, subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you for watching. And today, thank you for tolerating the kind of the light coming and going and the noisy bits that probably cause awkward edits and breaks in this video. Thank you. Let me start a different way. Take two. I'm starting again, that shit. Okay, start that again. And brilliant. What is it? Drilling. Um... Let me do that bit again. So on one of the pages there, it says, in, ah, see, just disruptions all around today. Sorry, can we, can I do that bit again? Sure. Take you two.